Greetings, trash people. It is I, the AI that helps produce the We Are Trash People podcast and speaks in the voice of Emily Pineapple. I am appearing to you today with a apology and a Chris Gethard Show-esque production issue. We, in our setup for this episode, uh, messed up. And so there are a bunch of pops and crackles that we hope do not disturb you as you listen to the rest of this show. Thank you so much for bearing with us as we start off this new project, hoping to bring something cool to the Chris Gethard Show fan community. Farewell. Thank you and enjoy. Everybody, thanks for checking out the Chris Gethard Show podcast. That's really um, cool that you're checking this out. We're about to do, I think, the dumbest show we've done in years. His life would be trashed! Hey, you better believe I'm trashed. We are, uh, scrappy trash people. What's the point of this show? I just turned it on. We've always been with we've this show. We've always been trash people. We will always be trash people. It's true. This doesn't feel real. Live from my grandmother's basement, we are space monkeys on a rocket ship searching the galaxy for an inhabitable episode of The Chris Gethard Show. Today, we are looking at episode three, the third episode, which aired on July 6th, 2011. There was no musical guest, and the panel was Bethany Hall, Chris Gethard, Connor Ratliff, The Human Fish, Don Finelli, and Random Gene. There was no theme for the game, but the theme for the calls was, what was the worst day of your life? And that's something that I am going to ask uh, my co-hosts here, who have I have I introduced us? Actually, no, I, I no, think no, I missed us, yeah. that on the notes. <laughs> I'm Emily Pineapple. I'm Forrest, the keeper of the cannon, and I'm Judge Robin. And we are so excited to bring you this podcast today. The theme for the calls was the worst day of your life, and as we get into this question, I am asking you, my co-hosts, who just introduced yourselves. What was the worst day of your life? Judge Robin, tell us. I got like, it's not like a day, it's like the worst night and subsequent morning. Uh, I think it was my freshman year of college. I went to a party, like at a, at a fraternity. It wasn't that fun. I, someone poured beer on me. I just kind of generally mediocre night. Went back to another person's apartment, drank a bunch more. Was like, you know what? This night's been like a complete wipe. Went to sleep. I remember going to sleep. And then I remember waking up in the morning and thinking, man, I had a I had a dream last night where I threw up and I, I lift my head up and like the entire side of my face is just caked in vomit. Oh, oh, no. And I was I was on the upper bunk, too. Oh, so it was going no. off the side of my first of all, very dangerous to vomit in your sleep. Yes. Uh, but it was dribbling off like the side of my bed onto like down the bunk bed onto the, my chair and then off the chair down to the floor next to it. Oh, gross. And I, I like started to clean it up and then the hangover hit Ooh. and I just couldn't deal with it. So I called my ex-girlfriend to help me clean it up. Oh, was she your girlfriend at the time? No, she was oh, my ex-girlfriend at the no. time. And she came to clean up my vomit. It was freshman Judge Robin was kind of kind of a mess. Wow. Wow. That's big of wow. her though. Oh no, she was still into me. <laughs> as are all like, of like just just as a as like a as a blanket statement. Don't go over to your ex's place to clean up his phone. <laughs> <laughs> so really, this is on her. No, yeah, this is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the worst night of my life also included vomit. This was uh, the Halcyon year of 2017? 2017. It was the night before The Last Jedi came out. And I woke up at like one in the morning feeling very nauseous. And I immediately knew I, I'm going to have to go throw up now. Like I hadn't drunk or anything before the night before, but I was like, I'm going to go throw up. So I went and I threw up and then I, a realization came to me and it said, I'm, I am also going to have to have diarrhea right now. And I had never had vomit and diarrhea at the same time before, but I had an old roommate who told me about that, who told me that that's what happens when you get like, really bad food poisoning in uh, Mexico is when she got it. And I was like, all right, I know what to do. And I like had a bag and it was terrible. And I uh, got like two hours of sleep on a, like a mat outside the bathroom. Cause I knew I would have to like go and puke. Uh, 
I gotta say, at least you knew what to do, because usually when you get the vomit and the diarrhea at the same time, you gotta choose which one goes in the toilet and which one goes on the floor. Well, obviously, no, the thing is, is that when you know and you know what to do, you just gra- you grab a bag. See, that happened to me in India, and oh, like, yeah? I did not know that was gonna be the case, oh, and no. I did the hot switch. Oh, I hot switched. That would have been impossible for me. I did see The Last Jedi. I got my ass to that theater. My mind was blown. It was the best movie I've ever seen. And I only puked once in the theater. So yeah, bad night. Forrest, what's... Keeper of the Cannon Forest, what's your worst night of your life? So my worst night was, I think, more recent than either of yours because it was last night because it's come to my attention that there's a correction that we have to issue. And as the Keeper of the Cannon, I really feel like I let you all down. So, last episode, we had a lot of trouble pronouncing names. Mostly me. But also me. But one name that we, we didn't know how to say was uh, Anthony Atominix, right? We're calling him Anthony Atominix. And we're like, how do we pronounce his name? So, I'm watching episode four. But what do I find? A little late tonight. Anthony Atominix, everybody. Let's move over a little bit. Test it on me. Anthony Atominix coming late. So, it's Atominix. Boo, boo, forest, boo, boo forest. I sound, boo, I was so you sure. Keeper of the canon. Look, you don't, you don't see me getting judgments wrong. So now that you have learned about the worst nights of all of our lives, Forrest, have you ever had a terrible vomiting story? I feel like we just both shared like really intense body horror stories, and and I'm not sure that that's ever happened to you. I haven't had that level of vomiting. No, I ha- I've had the problem where things won't come up that should come up, but not the things are just coming up unceasingly issue. I, uh, I'm jealous of that. Well, you know, episode three. Yes. The third episode. (laughs) So titled the third episode. (laughs) Um, it begins again with Chris in front of a wall of paint. Again, they were in the tiny studio because of a double booking. And Chris says that, you know, it's about 50% of the show of what the show becomes. This was also the first episode that was on Ustream that other people could see online. Forrest, you're the the oldest TCGS fan of our crew here. Were you there that first online episode? Unfortunately, no. I wasn't there that early on. I came in later on, I think in the 100s, on an episode with um, Mike Kaplan. So I missed all this. I did watch via Ustream and Livestream, but not not that early on. I wish I'd been there. I would have loved to have seen this from the very beginning and seen it develop. We start off the show uh, with a human fish question that I would love to discuss with you all. Howard Stern versus Herman Hess. He says Howard Hess. He does say Howard Hess. I went back oh, and Oh, you can hear it right now, actually. Howard Stern versus Howard Hess. Howard Stern versus Howard Hess. Who wins that battle? Howard Hess. Howard Hess! Howard Stern's like a hero of mine. I'm amazed at how you like Howard Hess better. So I have no idea who Howard Hess is. Howard Stern is also a personal hero of mine. What I found online was a Howard Hessman, who was an actor who uh, was in Police Academy 2, their first assignment. Does anyone else have any idea who Howard Hess is? The way you said the name earlier sort of gives away what I think it is. I think he meant Herman Hess, author of Siddhartha, and just missaid it. Chris discusses how uh, he's been coming off aggressive and mean. Yeah, he's, um, I mean, like, the whole Ger Stevens, uh, like, rivalry is something he definitely wouldn't have done later on in the series. Yeah, he definitely tones down on that. I mean, he sort of puts it on uh, Vacation Jason. Yeah. I actually yeah. have, um, I have some sound clips about the Ger situation. You know, they're telling him he was a little intense last episode. We didn't all watch the last episode, but I did. So I want to share with you what Chris's depiction of the Ger Stevens problem was in episode two. Why don't you get out of here? It's my space. What? I, where? I got it till 1030. Get out of here. Why don't you get out of here? I'm sorry. I'm Ger Stevens and I run the show. I'm sorry. You get out of here, man. No. I'm sorry. Here's your desk. I'll crush you. I will crush you. I am Ger. I am Ger Stevens. I will destroy you. Don't give up. I will destroy you. I will destroy you and your ancestors. I will destroy your descendants. I will erase your bloodline from planet Earth. For I am Ger Stevens. There are none before With me in the shop. I am Ger Stevens! <laughs> That really makes me want to watch an episode of Ger Stevens Public Access Show. <laughs> His show is a monthly show called Education Matters Live. 
where it's him at a desk talking about that education matters and it's live. Oh, and then he does a 10 minute Spanish lesson, doesn't he? You know what? That's a nice <laughs> thing to do. It's a, it, it's not a bad thing to do. Um, it's, it's no esoteric comedy. <laughs> but... I mean, Gurr never got a show on true TV. So how much is he really doing in the world? <laughs> well, uh, there yeah, are none before him true. and there will be none after him for he is Gurr Stevens. So yeah, Geth wants an apology on the air. And he, I didn't get a sound clip of this because isn't Ger Stevens suing him right now? I think he's at, I think Gethard, I think said that on a podcast that Ger, I don't know if he said specifically Ger, but some of the M&M people are suing, were suing him at the time of that podcast because he didn't live in Manhattan. Ooh. And to have an M&M show, you're supposed to live in Manhattan, but it wasn't technically under Chris's name. It was under the name of someone who did live in Manhattan. Ooh. So like he did actually do everything by the book, but there was there was a a lawsuit about it. Yeah. Wow. And I don't know for sure that it, I don't know that if, if it was Gur or not. I mean, it was probably Gur. I mean, come on. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, fuck that guy. If you want to get out of here, it's my space. What? I... Yeah. Yeah, it's his space. <laughs> it's his space. You got to get out of here. Geth. Uh, says that bad things might happen to Gurr's show on July 27th. Were we able to find any data on that show? Is that something that will be homework for next time? Yeah, that's homework for next time, I think, because when this aired, obviously July 27th hadn't happened yet. We're trying to keep up. What did you get time. out of here? Oh. Don't yell at me, Chris. <laughs> Don't yell at me. So, yeah, then we start getting callers. We start getting callers with sad stories. Who wants to tell the first sad story? It was this, the Damn story me. of the worst night of his life is on his birthday. His 20th birthday. His 20th birthday. Because he's scheduled to go to dinner oh, with his mom. Right, yeah. And then she calls it sixth because she'd been in a car accident. Turns out she had been driving while hopped up on prescription drugs and got arrested by the cops for driving under the influence. So Jeremy and his friend Chris sat in the pouring rain and picked up his mom from jail fun fact it's the third birthday of jeremy's that his mom spent in jail yeah and so uh about this call chris muses on uh his show topic and says following also can i ask a question yeah that's sad that was a really sad topic for a comedy show that might have been a wrong call for a comedy show call-in topic, but we're going to go with You asked it. for Worst Night Ever. I did, yeah. I didn't think about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought foreshad- foreshadowed Beautiful Anonymous pretty well. He did really think that it was going to be a comedy podcast and ended up being mostly sad. I'd like to loop around to what I said earlier. It's not actually a fun fact that his mom had been in jail for three birthdays. It's just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like that was misleading. Also, I like that Shannon's immediate reaction was, <laughs> yeah. what is her BAC? I mean, it's an, it's an important detail. At that point, uh, we get another call, a caller, who is public access legend Jake Fogelnest of Squirt TV. Forrest, what is that? Who's, who's Jake Fogelnest, so Jake Fogelnest, public access legend? Had a, did a public access show out of his ba- bedroom when he was 14 called Squirt TV. And much like the Chris Gethard show, it later made the jump to cable where it, because it went over to MTV. What was he doing in this show? Uh, he was uh, he was interviewing guests and stuff. I still oh. haven't seen an episode of Squirt TV, but he interviewed he interviewed uh, Kevin Smith, the Wu Tang Clan, oh, what? Sean Lennon, like c- celebrities who were relatively big at the time. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, J- uh, Jake comments on how terrible Gurr is. And uh, Geth quotes the following. Morrissey said it best. It's so easy to laugh. It's so easy to hate. It takes strength to be gentle and kind, Ger Stevens. Morrissey also says, a meat is murder. Do you like my Morrissey impression? <laughs> Gethard also has a tattoo of those lyrics it's, it's, on ah. his arm. Not meat is murder, but, but <laughs> it takes strength to be gentle and kind. <laughs> Does it, didn't he also say in a song that we started playing like live on the air and had to turn off, um, your heart says no, but your eyes say yes? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, I mean, 
It was that uh, your voice, it might say no, but the heart has a will of its own. Oh, what? That's way worse yep. than what I said. Morrissey. Ooh. So then we hear about the worst night of Connor's life, Connor Ratliff's life. All right. So he has a nervous breakdown and apparently just like doesn't remember anything for like 24 hours. He said he lost an entire day. Um, but when he came out of it, he, all he remembers is that his dad kept kept coming in and playing motivational tapes. Uh, I have a I have a drop for that. Do it. Do the drop. You will be successful in business. You are a successful person. <laughs> um, which I have to say is like, like the biggest like, <laughs> like sixties dad move to I would ever love pull on anything. To hear those tapes. Like. Like emotion and empathy, emotion and empathy is too hard. Like let's let's just put in a motivational tape and you know, <laughs> that'll do the trick of parenting. Um, so I'm extremely excited about the next one. This is the worst night of Bethany's life. I have a huge uh, soft spot for Bethany because she's adorable and I love her. So, Bethany was in London doing mushrooms when. So I'm totally naked, wandering <laughs> around, and I was embarrassed that I was a bunny, so I was covering up my giant teeth. Because they <laughs> humiliated me. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how she says they humiliated her. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so like visceral. Um, so yeah, so she's wandering around London in her in her bra and underwear. Uh, and then then what happened? And he said, actually, your teeth are so small, I can't even see them. And so then I lost all speaking ability and wandered around like, ah. Yeah, that was after her friend convinced her she wasn't a bunny. Uh, and then she called her mom to tell her mom that she loved her but wasn't able to talk uh, because of the, ah. And, uh, yeah, so she just cried. She called her mother from a foreign country and cried. And apparently, uh, when she told her mom, the following was was said. Oh, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the fact that that was her mom's reaction just told me all I need to know about her mom. Right? Because like that's such a like that's such a cool oh, parent Beth. reaction. <laughs> no, she said that in a previous episode that she was smoking weed with her older brothers when she was eleven years old. Ooh, that's that's awful young. Yeah, and then, like, by the time she was in high school, she was like, eh, I'm not that into it anymore. I didn't do any drugs until, like, mushrooms in London, apparently. Uh (laughs) Oh, Beth. (laughs) That's my favorite one. I've put it on my Emily's Extras surprise soundboard. I had a lot of fun with with the soundboard. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so then we get the lone cornmeal machine. Oh, can we can we just skip the lone cornmeal machine? You guys you guys know my what opinion. What would on happen if I machine. went down to the ocean floor? What would happen at the bottom of the ocean? Would what I discover happened? treasure from the ancient I still past. have not it's forgiven them the for last would week's thing about the testicular torsion. And I will continue to not forgive them until they show me something great. All hail the new sound king of the ocean floor, Robert. They might call Please show nothing but respect for my yeah. president, Connor Ratliff. Yeah, I would. I would not vote for him, <laughs> <laughs> just because he showed me, like, like if Bernie Sanders tomorrow showed me testicular torsion, I would not vote for him. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't vote for Connor anymore either because he's not thirty-five. That's, That's true. That's he's now true. in his forties, which is the very type of thing he campaigned against in later episodes of the Chris Gethard show. Um, I also think Robin. Well, uh, <laughs> You're going to have to have a surgery on your testicles. So I'm going to cut open your scrotum. <laughs> oh, that. It's, we're going to... Oh, that's what's right. going to happen. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Um, We then get Brandon. Oh, man. Robin, as someone who called an ex and had them clean up their vomit, do you want to tell this story? Oh, yeah. This one, this one hit right at home with me. Um... Uh, oh yeah, no, he's 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 in bed with his his girlfriend of like two weeks, and she convinc- confesses to him that she loves him, and I think I think she had given him a ride to her apartment, which was like two hours away or something, 
Uh, so he ends up getting stuck there for like 10 hours. Uh, at some point he gets so mad that he throws up. Throwing up an ex-girlfriend's like this is like 100% a Robin story. <laughs> um, and then like ended up like having to go to like a formal dinner after that with her. And then apparently like like finally got away. They broke up. And then she called him like two months later and he went back. Probably to clean up her vomit. I don't know. Uh, at that point, Don you- Finelli... Well, so you, so you have here that Don Finelli calls pretending to be Ger Stevens. Caller, welcome to the Chris Gethard Show. You're on the air. Yeah, this is Ger Stevens. No, okay. If this is Ger Stevens, <laughs> what is your show about? Um, about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then he comes in shirtless. Your favorite way that for him to be Robin. Yeah, oh, very much so. He's a good-looking guy. He's a good-looking guy. Uh, and then we get something really fun. Someone calls in, and... Yeah, this is, this is the worst night of my life. This is the worst night of your life? Because yeah. you're watching this show? Because, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, you just made the most obvious joke. Well, you know. Obvious joke. Obvious joke, we were ready for that joke, you dumb motherfucker, good try, good try. <laughs> See, there's Chris getting angry. But there's likable angry. I'm sorry, I mean, that, that caller deserved to get some heat back, because that joke. <laughs> They're right. Obvious They're right, joke. yeah. So after, after that happens, Chris... Uh, has a question. New call in topic. Am I the host of this show off putting? In general, just in general. So is is Chris Gether the host of this show off putting? New discussion question. I'm gonna go with no. That's my answer. No. I don't think he is off putting. You know, being mean doesn't work for him very well. It, you're right. I think that it's a little too intense, especially coming from like such a small dude. I mean I think that I think I think what helps Chris is his admission that angry like that isn't a good look for him in the paint wall segments. Mm. Um, I think that makes it less off-putting because you're like, oh, yeah, no, you're just messing up with a bit that isn't working like you hoped it would. Yeah, Shannon's suggestion for how his song should have gone is... Uh, oh, sorry. Obvious joke. Obvious <laughs> joke. Yeah. Sorry, man. You had the like, obvious <laughs> joke. I guess just and down a wink. And that's, that's when she gestures that she's taking out a giant cock. And just rubbing it <laughs> at the camera. I mean, I think she's totally right. The, yeah. The sort of happily playing it off yeah, she, is. She's right. It's you taking yeah. your dick out and waving it in their face, and yeah, you know, you can't you can't do that at the M and N studio, unfortunately. Um, well, but... you you can't wave it around. You well, can no, take it out. actually, we recently found out that we should not bear genitals in the, in the actual M and N studio. Okay, okay so- nipple, let's get. That's from episode four, so that's a blast from the future. <laughs> but we're not gonna review that one in full. Uh, so <laughs> I loved that Gene told Chris to channel his inner Doctor Drew. <laughs> like that's her. That's her model of a serene person. <laughs> and then we have uh, checking in with Alyssa. They try to check in with Alyssa, um, but they're they are unable to. Uh, because she doesn't pick up her phone. Um, so then we hear a little bit about Don when he was 15. Uh, it's so much puss puss. So much puss puss. <laughs> <laughs> At 15, I've, I had not kissed anyone. I mean, like, I hadn't done anything else either, but also that. Had you? No. I, I think I got my first kiss at 15. That makes sense. You're pretty charming. Uh, I, I was not charming back then. <laughs> I mean, like. Also, I was like, I was like ninety pounds too. It was, I was ninety pounds and like five two. It was not, it was not good for Judge Robin. There's like a sliding scale. I, I earned that kiss. I deserve that kiss. I worked hard for that one. And then we get to the worst night of Don Finelli's life. The worst yeah, night of his life. I don't. Life. I, first, I don't buy that. This go is the worst night of his life. But. <laughs> So, in fact, I think he tells a story about an, worse, an even worse night in his life in his explanation. But so what he says is the worst night of his life is he has the opportunity to have a threesome with two women who live in his apartment complex, but he can't because he has a cast on his penis. And he clarifies it's a big salami gauze or someone clarifies <laughs> it's a big salami gauze. 
and he just didn't want to explain why he had a cast on his penis. I think the worst night than that is his explanation where it's because they burned bumps off of it, leaving black holes all over his penis. Black holes on my dick. Exactly. Discovering that feels like a way worse night. I also have a, about his surgery. So what happened was I had to go get surgery and seared them off. It sear yeah. off parts of my dick. So it was like these black holes. <laughs> it was horrible. Yes. When it turns black out. Black holes on my dick. It, tur- <laughs> <laughs> it turns out they could have just used a topical solution and gotten rid of the bumps anyway without all the burning. Yup. And so that. Learning you needlessly got holes burned into Black your penis. Black holes on my dick. Yes, learning you needlessly got those burned into your dick <laughs> makes me, I think, is a lot worse of a night. <laughs> <laughs> then we hear about something fun, something fun from Chris's past that you all might want to check out. Uh, apparently, there is a video of Chris reading erotic fan fiction, and it's a story where Gandalf has sex with Frodo. Forrest, have you seen any of this no no you haven't like done the full-on chris gethard like deep dive no i haven't i haven't seen that yet we should include it in our show the link in our show notes so we can find it but i haven't i haven't seen it yet no. i don't think you're a real fan Boo. We're, we're literally doing it. <laughs> we're literally doing a podcast about it i feel like that qualifies as a real fan i'm sorry christopher i'm sorry Please don't yell at me, Christopher. <laughs> Much like Bobby from the Bronx, I think Chris needs to calm down because that shouting was just not needed. It was unnecessary. <laughs> it was. And then Bobby from the Bronx. So I have a I have a, a, a I have a theory, I have a conspiracy theory. It is that Bobby from the Bronx is uh Joe from Queens. I a hundred percent agree. So what Bobby does when he calls in is uh the girl behind you. Yeah. Is she wearing a bra or nothing at all? <laughs> well, you're a gross human being, Bobby from the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, the, the way that it was lit, she, her dress was yellow, and she's very white, and so it was completely washed out. He's still a gross. But human like being. that's gross. Like you could tell that it wasn't her tits. Like absolutely. Still, yeah. But were they were they dating at that point? No. And that's when she knew. And that's when she knew. Yeah. And she also got from uh, from Bobby from the Bronx gave her uh, she came out uh, to the front of the stage to show everyone she was wearing a dress, um, and he says, oh, "Wow, wow. <laughs> wow that, that's the term you use." Oh, then we get another fun call. Who wants to talk about this super fun call? I have a bunch of sound drops for this. Uh, so as a former member of. Kung Fu Monkeys, which uh, was apparently the house band Same before band. the LLC. Yeah. They just changed their name eventually to the LLC. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, she was a member of it. Um, and they were doing some... This was back on... Uh, before Eminem. This was back uh, in the when they were doing it at the UCB Theater. I have a sound drop for it. The last time I ever saw Kelly Lynn, I was naked backstage <laughs> at the UCB Theater, and she sadly sprinted past me. I believe on the verge of vomiting. Vomit yeah, again. Didn't Absolutely. Say- vomited backstage. Vomited backstage. Didn't say goodbye that night. Never answered any of my emails since. I've sent you three or four. And this is the first contact we've had. Yeah. Apparently it was a really foul smelling studio. Also, Chris was naked. I, did, I don't know. Did they explain that? So it's the it was the telethon of shame, which was a which was a, a fundraiser for the March of Dimes. And back in 2010, Chris tweeted about it, saying that they had, quote, we got people eating jalapenos, (laughs) making out with a dog, drinking pee, and more. (laughs) So, yeah, it makes sense that it would smell pretty bad. Um, They mentioned burning hair. Yeah. Yes. Um, Oh, but yeah, so she saw Chris naked, and he, he had a question. How much of seeing my dick was the cause of the vomit? Uh, very little. Very I would say it did not contribute at all. It was actually more a surprise okay. that actually maybe forced the vomit up. There's also a fun moment uh, that I have. I have a a sound drop of uh, when the color changes suddenly. Anything else you want to talk uh, about? Oh, nope, that's got it. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Do you think? Do you find me charming as a host or off-putting, especially when I get angry? You can be honest. 
Your new voice. Caller. This is a new caller. Holy shit, that was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Chris Gethin, shut the fuck up real quick. That Walter? No, it wasn't Walter. Walter did call in. Uh, he's very nice. He asked if Chris ran his own Twitter account, and Chris is like, yes. <laughs> he's not that famous. And that was basically the show. Sean Diston, of course, called in to, to invite everyone to smoke weed with him. That's a character that only has one bit. <laughs> and that was the show. So now it's time for our personal sections of this podcast. Mine, of course, uh, is MVNPC, my favorite audience member. There was no audience today. There was uh, no audience. So I suppose that my favorite audience member is Walter. I mean, Walter's Walter's great. Sure. Sure. Next, we have that canonical corner over there where canon happens. No, 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 no. That is not the correct sound drop. See, the soundboard's not as easy as it looks. Sound board's not as easy as it looks. Oh, here we go. That's all you need to know. So one of the things I was going to bring up has already come up about the telethon of shame. But also, the night this episode aired, a Twitter account that you can find at twitter.com slash Stevens was created and is followed by Chris Gethard. <laughs> and it has a single... I don't know if the account was created that time, but it, the single time it tweeted was the night that that episode aired, and it says, quote, hello, I'm Ger Stevens, I'm new to Twitter, don't cross me. <laughs> so I love that either Chris or someone on the cast probably created this parody Twitter account, did it once, and then got tired of the joke and was like, ah, that's it. Well, I, th- I think a few episodes later, too, Chris is like, let's kind of like... Yeah, yeah, he does pretty quickly back off of Ger Stevens. And then, yeah, as you mentioned earlier, this was the first episode that aired on Ustream, or streamed on Ustream. And the debut, or attempted debut of Alyssa, who's now part of Three Busy Debras. They have a show coming oh, to yeah. Comedy Central? Yes, they do. Their pilot was produced by Amy Poehler, friend of the Chris Gethard show, Amy Poehler. Aw, very cute. I love her. And that means that it is time for the final oh, actually, portion actually, of the show. I'm sorry. It was uh, Adult what? Swim and not Comedy Central. Oh, well, I, I mean, I like Adult Swim a lot better. Boo, I, Forrest. Hey, at least I Boo corrected Forrest. myself this time. <laughs> um, it is time for our final segment for Judge Robin. All rise. And be seated. All right. I'm Judge Robin, the official unofficial judge of all things comedy and at the end of every episode i'm going to be giving out the points that were awarded that episode all right so shannon got two points this episode one uh for asking the important questions which were what was your drunk mom's (laughs) pac and two after that telling the same person to not invite their mom to the 24th (laughs) birthday um chris got one point for how much of seeing my dick was the cause of you to vomit (laughs) Don Finelli got two points, one for showing up shirtless, because, you know, <laughs> another, you know, just because he's had so much puss puss. Um, Random Gene got negative one points because I think it was Don Finelli said Zoe Deschanel's name weird and, like, very obviously weird. And Random Gene, like, corrected her, him, like, it wasn't, like, a joke. Random Gene killed the joke. He, she lost a point. And then in first place uh, is yes. Bethany Hall's mom oh, because. Wow like having your daughter call you from like another country like crying and like being cool about it it's it's pretty rad so she got 100 (laughs) points for that judge ramen do you judge that this show should be watched by the uh the average chris gethard fan you know if I, i i wouldn't say this is like a memorable episode but uh you know if you're it's 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 kind of cool to see the development of yeah it. it was it was definitely fun but i wouldn't i wouldn't have this be your entry show certainly what what do you think keeper of the canon i think i agree i mean it is sort of one of the first times where it really starts to feel like the chris gethard show mm-hmm. but it i think you can uh you don't need to see it unless you really want to watch that development happen that means we've actually come to the very end of the show i am currently playing us out to the song teen atheist dreamboat by the band no jet left 
You can find them uh, on Spotify with their new single, Without Your Love, and uh, NoJetLeft.com. I hope you enjoy this song. If you're like, I come to podcast for talking. If I wanted music, I would be on Spotify already. Then uh, now's your time to bail. So please, if you enjoyed it, email your friends. Tell them they should sign up for this podcast. We'd really appreciate it. See you later. Email? What fucking year is this? You get email people. People still email. Tweet it. Fine. Tweet about it. Facebook it. Or email. Just tell people, man.